Hi, my name is Sarish Sudakran and in this video, we'll analyze the cinematography of Bradford Young. The goal is to break down his techniques so you have a starting place to learn more about his work. Bradford Young is a truly modern cinematographer, pretty much a part of the digital revolution. Most of the movies he shoots are in digital cameras, typically the Arri Alexa. He changes lenses from project to project to get the look he is after. He prefers the 2.39 to 1 frame, usually anamorphic, but also Super 35. He also operates his camera most of the time, whether it be handheld or in dollies. What makes him part of the modern DSLR era is his use of the wide open aperture, like T1.9 on Arrival and The Most Violent Year. On the flashback scenes in Arrival, he also opened up to T1.3 to get a shallow depth of field look, which he prefers as part of his signature style. The other major style that sets him apart from the crowd is his use of underexposure. He's predominantly influenced by photographers like Ray Di Carava and cinematographers like Vilmos Zsigmund, Gordon Willis and Harris Savides. He isn't afraid to keep his actors in the shadows, often pushing the boundaries. When others are afraid to underexpose dark actors, he manages to create beautiful and rich skin tones. These are made all the more beautiful with his use of close-ups so the faces become landscapes of painted light. It also becomes a reflection of the environment, reflecting back the same mood. Bradford Young tries to stick to practical light sources whenever he can, which doesn't mean he disregards them. Practicals are often designed strategically and enhanced with dimmers and bulbs specifically designed to create the vibes and atmosphere he's known for. When it comes to lighting faces, he loves a super soft light, almost always bounced, rarely direct, and usually always as a book light or some kind of second diffusion to eliminate specular highlights. He prefers the top light most of the time, and on faces he prefers the top side lighting style or the side lighting style. He loves to use Kino flows to get his soft look. The side lighting style is derived from the setting sun, which is also a common source of light in interiors. Whenever he lights, he tries to motivate the lighting as if from a single source. This could mean a fixture or two outside the window or a practical lamp in a room. His restraint is what delivers the atmosphere. He also has the tendency to sandwich faces with light from two sides or have a rim light on just one side as the only source of light. He carries this style to exteriors as well, where he tries to light with natural light most of the time. This means keeping actors backlit with their faces slightly under even for daytime. He uses both tungsten and HMI sources and exteriors and tries to shoot at around the 4500 Kelvin mark so he gets a warmer feel overall while still keeping some of the blue tones for separation. He combines amber and cyan colors often and this is another indication of the influence of modern cinematography trends on his work. His movies are color graded all the time and he tries to create a pre-look LUT that he uses on set. As you can see, most of the nuances are achieved on location and a heavy grade in post would definitely defeat the atmosphere he worked so hard to create. It also helps him that the Alexa has excellent dynamic range and he can raise or lower the shadows without affecting the overall image quality. I hope this brief video makes you curious enough to learn more about the brilliant cinematography of Bradford Young. Ultimately, what makes him special is his unique ability to take everyday mundane objects and turn it into something extraordinary. He's only getting started, so we can expect great things from him in the future. Let's watch with bated breath as he explores the darkness to find his core as a cinematographer. The best way to learn more about him is to watch his movies, and from his interviews in the American Cinematographer magazine and elsewhere. An exclusive PDF summary of my notes are available on Patreon. You'll find the link in the description. If there's a favorite cinematographer whose work you want analyzed, let me know. To see more videos like this one, please subscribe. There are lots more on the way. Bye now.